Welcome to DB Workshop channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe it. Today we will discuss virtual machines. Let's start. The topics we will cover in this session are virtual machines, hypervisor, hypervisor type 1, hypervisor type 2, multi-threading, memory mapped files, multi-core programming, and RAID. Before we start, let's see a few concepts virtual machine virtual machine is emulation of computer system it is very efficient and isolated and duplicate of a real machine host operating system virtualization is installed on a pre-existing operating system we call it host operating system guest operating system the operating system of a installed virtual machine is called guest operating system process virtual machine these are designed to execute the programs in a platform independent environment we call it process virtual machine system virtual machine system virtual machine is the alternative of the real machine and this is operating system library virtualization another concept server virtualization the partition of physical server into number of small virtual machines each virtual machine has its own operating system so we call it server virtualization in server virtualization we could have a two types like full virtualization further full virtualization could be a software assisted with the help of the software if you install the virtual machines for example oracle virtual box so that is full virtualization that is software assisted with the help of the software we are doing the full virtualization another one could be a hardware assisted for example Hyper-V Hyper for the uh, Microsoft Windows 10 for example Hyper-V is enabled and uh, with, with the help of the Hyper-V we create the virtual machines so that is full virtualization example another one could be a para virtualization or the para hypervisor let us discuss what is the hypervisor every hypervisor has a virtualization machine monitor and what it does it is just a layer between operating system and hardware it provides the services to the virtual, virtual operating system and it provides the features to the virtual operating system every time it, it identify a trap it just uh, respond to the privileged CPU instruction it can handle queuing it can handle dispatching on the other hand what is para virtualization para virtualization it is just uh, based on a hypervisor again but the key point is guest operating system is modified it is compiled and it is installed as a guest operating system emulation overhead is removed but there's a new overhead that is we need to modify the operating system of the guest operating system and it need to be compiled and then we could install it so that is a neg negative point that we have to modify the guest operating system it is extra work so the performance is increased and guest operating system can directly communicate with the hypervisor example is Zen here the virtual guest machine are aware that it has been virtuali virtualized in full virtualization the guest operating system doesn't know that it is a part of the virtual machine because operating system does not itself know and guest directly in the para virtualization guest directly communicate with the host hypervisor let's discuss full virtualization similar to the para hypervisor but actually it is full virtualization is a bit slower than the para hypervisor full virtualization emulate the underlying hardware when required example is VMware ESX or uh, Oracle VirtualBox or uh, Microsoft Windows 
Hyper-V. So in the full virtualization, it could be a hardware assisted, it could be a software assisted. Uh, in the full virtualization, there is no need to modify the guest operating system code. So uh, there is a relief over here, but the point is, it is the minus points are disadvantage. Disadvantages are it is very complex and it is slow and new device drivers installation is difficult. Hardware assisted. Hardware assisted is with the help of the hardware we achieve the virtualization. It is similar to the para hypervisor AMD. We uh, Pacifica is example. Intel VT, VT, Vanderpool is an example. Another example is the Microsoft uh, Hyper Hyper B is an example. So again, here is there is no modification required of guest operating system, less hypervisor overhead, but it requires hardware support. The kernel level, there's few uh, hypervisor that is then at the kernel level. Instead of the hypervisor, it uses a separate Linux kernel version. I mean, th there is a way that we could use a kernel level of uh, virtualization. We don't use a hypervisor here. It is easy to run multiple VM OS on a single host. Device driver need to be interact between main Linux kernel and virtual machine, and it could have a kernel virtual machine and could have a user mode Linux so these are two type next is system level operating system virtualization host machine shared kernel so how that is possible that is possible using change root concept so ch root starts on the boot up and virtual servers share the same copy of the operating system examples are free vps and uh, linux v server open vz the plus points this is a lightweight it support many operating system more security is there more isolation is there minus points kernel problem cause a complete blackout S similarly driver problem can com cause a complete blackout server vir virtualization uh, basically means if if the different servers have a different op operating system we have to go for server virtualization a uh, few more notes about a uh, hypervisor because virtual machine manager we call a BM BMM so hardware virtualization allows a multiple guest operating system to run on the single host system used in a cloud hosting it's just a divide and allocate the resources uh, to the different hardware uh, if it is a cloud hosting and it, it can pro it provide a partition isol isolation and abstraction also hypervisor has a dispatcher dispatcher is just a uh, monitor entry point and it reroute the reroute the instruction of the virtual machine and allocator is something that is any instruction in the vm is released to the system resource it just invoke the dispatcher so allocator just to see if any request is coming system resource request is coming it just invoke the dispatcher and it give it to the dispatcher and again the dispatcher reroute it to the virtual machine instruction of the virtual machine to the hypervisor so these are part of the hypervisor allocator see what are the request system request uh, system resource request is coming and again it gives to the dispatcher and dispatcher know what to do with it with that because it this is a part of the hypervisor and interpreter if any privileged uh, maybe root level or very system level privileged inst instruction in VM is coming it just interpret it is it run the interpreter for the that particular routine so that hypervisor can interact with the hardware or underlying host operating system so type one hypervisor we call it a bare metal hypervisor it it runs uh, directly on hardware if you see the uh, image for the example here for more clarity these are called uh, type 1 are called a wear metal hypervisor it runs uh, directly on a hardware hypervisor runs uh, uh, on the underlying host system hypervisor has a direct access to the hardware resources it has a very good better performance it has a no middleware over there it is simple it is easy to set up there is no hosted hypervisor so parameter and key point parameter for a hypervisor 
we have to see what is the CPU overhead, what is the maximum host and memory being used, maximum guest memory is being used and data support for virtual processor. So these are the parameters we could see and its performance is far better. Type 2 hypervisor is just a hosted, uh, hosted hypervisor hypervisor that means there is a host operating system and it is simply a software being installed on the host operating system for example if i have a windows operating a windows operating system installed on my laptop and that is a host operating system if i install a oracle virtual box on the top of it that is called it is simple a software and that is called type 2 hypervisor hypervisor runs directly on the underlying host system and hypervisor requests the operating system for making any hardware calls so the host operating system on the top of it that this software is being installed it is responsible for all all the hardware calls it goes through the host operating system let's see the examples of these two types in the next slide Hyper-B type and hypervisor uh, for example take example for Hyper-B Windows Hyper-B so Hyper-B is a type and hypervisor even though it uh, runs on a Windows as a Windows Server role, it is still considered as a bare metal and native hypervisor. That means a hardware level thing. The key difference between Hyper B and Type 2 hypervisor is that Hyper B uses the hardware assisted virtualization. It is a hardware assisted, it is not a software assisted. It is just a hardware level thing. Virtualization is supported at the CPU level by the Intel BT or by AMDV. So this allows the Hyper-B virtual machine to communicate directly with the server hardware and allowing the virtual machine to perform far better than Type 2 hypervisor th which is actually nothing but a software thing. Type 1 hypervisor system are very expensive and Hyper-B can only be enabled on Windows Pro or Education Edition. For example, if, if I have a Windows 10 installed or maybe uh, single user or home edition uh, Windows 10 is installed on my laptop. I cannot enable the Hyper-B uh, server role because if I try to enable the Hyper-B as a Windows server uh, server role, it won't allow me. It, at least to enable Hyper-B, I need to have a either Windows Pro or Windows Education. So then only I can use uh, Hyper-B enable thing. So and these are expensive because we need to purchase operating system windows pro and or windows education whatever oracle virtualization oracle virtual box type are the type 2 hypervisor it is a hosted uh, hypervisor and it is a older hypervisor and commonly uh, commonly type 2 hypervisor and they run on the top of the host operating system for example on the windows laptop if i'm just installing the oracle virtual box it is nothing but a but a simple software over there and so it 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 will consider as a type 2 and it is f far slower than the type 1 hypervisor because it is not it is a software thing it is not a hardware thing so they uh, how it works they intercept the commands from the virtual machine and then it's sent to the hardware for processing and how that how that is possible it is just to give the commands to the host operating system and host host, host operating system take care of the hardware thing and it's just to do the system call and do the translation so type 2 hyper hypervisor are tend to be slow oracle virtual box again is a type 2 hypervisor just a repeat of the same thing it is a type 2 hypervisor it is a virtualization host software that run on the run as an application on the host operating system so for example if you have to reboot the guest operating system or if you want to do installation or uh, do the guest op uh, do some uh, reboot of the guest operating system virtual box we don't need to uh, restart the host operating system because it has nothing to do with that so virtual box is very convenient it is very fast and it is very free uh, but overall type 2 hypervisor are slower than type 1 hypervisor next thread library If you want to see more uh, details about uh, Hyper-B, uh, I have four videos in my channel. I can provide the uh, the link to those Hyper-B configuration videos and how to enable how to enable the Hyper-B on your uh, Windows laptop. And for more clarity, if you want to go go through those videos, uh, it would be great. And I highly recommend you to please go through those videos. I am providing those uh, video link Hyper-B playlist in. The description of this video keep watching
वेलकम टू डी वी वर्कशॉप चैनल इफ यू हैवन सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल प्लीज डू इट ना थैंक यू